Welcome to another busy webinar. We're going to talk about how to look great in the inbox, the seven don'ts of email design. Today's event is brought to you in partnership with Constant Contact and BusyWeb. I am Dave Meyer of BusyWeb, and here's getting right to the business. All right, so first, if you have any questions during the event, or if you need to get a hold of us, or have any specific questions, or want help with questions on the event today, here's how to get a hold of them. If you want to log questions live, this is where you're going to want to go, and uh, you're going to want to connect up. Actually, you're just going to go to busyweb.com slash event or the event link that you see on your page. I'm going to switch over to that page for a moment, and we're going to talk about this and how it works. When you click on the event and you've followed us over, you're going to see two options on how to interact with our event today. First one is going to be to simply click play in the video window in the link. So you clicked on this link from your email and you're watching the video here, you can expand that up. You can also click to ask questions by clicking on this Google Plus link that I've highlighted here under number one. If you click on that Google Plus link, it's going to open up a new window and then you'll see this event and it's going to be highlighted with Q&A and live and a big play button. If you simply click that big play button, Assuming you are logged in to Google Plus and all you need is a Gmail account to do that Click on this play button and it's going to open up a new window And I'm going to click down here and pause so that you don't hear me and then in the lower right hand corner There is a button that says ask a new question if you click on this ask a new question button you can ask a question here and we'll cover your questions. Your questions, first and foremost, will be about how to look great in the inbox or any specific constant contact questions you have. But also, as we near the end of our event today, if you have any questions on online marketing, we'd love to help you with those as well. Again, I am Dave Meyer with BusyWeb. Let's get right down to business. And again, if you need, if you need details or have any questions on how to access things, and specifically if you would like the tips pages of the presentation that I'm going to talk through today, there are two options. First, you can do a screen share of the event. And if you want to do a screen share, all you really need to do is on Windows, hold down the Alt key and hit the print screen button. And then you can open up your favorite editor of choice, be it text edit or Microsoft Word and click paste. Or if you're on a Mac, you can do Command Shift 4 and that will also open up a crosshairs and that'll take a picture of the event content today. Or you can simply send an email to davidbusyweb.com, ask for the presentation deck, and we'd love to send that to you so that you have it. All right, so that's details and the basics of the event today. Also wanted to remind you a little bit about who BusyWeb is, who we are. And so BusyWeb has been around for 16 years now. We're based in Minneapolis, Minnesota, just a little bit north of Minneapolis, out of downtown. And our hive is located in Champlin, where all seven or all 16 or so of our employees hang out and where we help our clients generate buzz without getting stung. What does that look like? Well, we're a WordPress web design shop that builds online marketing programs for our clients, including social media engagement, email marketing, of course, search engine optimization, content publishing and writing, and of course, WordPress powered web design. When you build a website with BusyWeb, that act of publishing on your website automatically posts to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, and seamlessly integrates with Constant Contact and your email marketing. Email is what we're here to talk about today, so let's get right into it. First impressions absolutely matter. When someone opens your email, what they see is going to determine what they do next. Chances are you're going to want them to read your newsletters or announcements, take a next step, visit your website, register for an event, donate your non to your nonprofit, or try your product. This is where great looking emails are going to be crucial. People make snap judgments about whether or not to read your emails on an itty bitty little device called a phone more often than not. So if you're looking for first impressions and to get action on your events or on your emails, what you need to do is have a beautiful website, a beautiful email, and beautiful branded content. So let's talk a little bit about what that looks like inside of the inbox. 
It's really the difference between something that we all send every single day, like an email on the left. Hey, Julie, did you know that the easiest way to succeed in life and business is with an unfair advantage? Well, that's great and wonderful, but a marketing message has coding on it that includes branding, colors, identification, and really helps drive toward a specific call to action. What the Austin Chamber is looking for here is for someone to reserve their booth. And so that's exactly what it hones in on. So if you're looking for help and if you're looking to get real results, make sure that you take the extra little bit of time. The good news is if you use a tool like Constant Contact, having your emails look amazing is not that difficult. We also need to make sure that you understand that the world has now changed. Mobile devices now rule the world. As a matter of fact, 51% of emails are opened on a mobile device. And that translates into real results because when an email doesn't look good on mobile, 80% of users tend to delete that email. And worse, 30% of the users that see that email, and if it doesn't look good on mobile, will unsubscribe from your list. They'll go down to the bottom, say, who are these clowns in there, and they'll go off and away. So make sure that you connect up with that and that you're thinking about that. If you're not developing and using great-looking emails, you're losing momentum in your marketing. So what's our agenda today? First, we're going to talk through, and of course, the seven don'ts of email design. Don't forget your branding. Don't use hard-to-read fonts. Don't use the wrong colors. Don't be disorganized. Don't forget images. Don't forget to make it shareable. And don't ignore mobile. We're going to go through these one by one, and we're going to cover them in a little bit more depth on each of these. And of course, as we go through, I would encourage you to ask questions. So if you do have questions on today's event or on any of these don'ts, or have some specific examples that you would like us to share, let us know and connect up. If you have an email or a, or a message or branding that you want us to see, simply log those in the Q&A function. And again, that's over on the right-hand side of this event page today. So if you click that green Ask a New Question button, that's how you reach us. We have a lot of viewers online today, so thank you all very much for joining our busy webinar. And let's keep going and talk through the first of our don'ts, don't forget your branding. So here's some don'ts. And you're going to see this quite a few times that we're going to go through it left to right. What not to do is have your images over on the right-hand side um, as far as the logo, to have your content be kind of weird and funky looking, have dark text over dark backgrounds. And what you need to do is really clean things up, make sure that you're looking at your look and feel and making sure that you dial it in as far as making your brand be well represented. If you own a yoga studio, as in, as in this case, your newsletter should be visually related to your overall brand, and that includes your logo. That way your recipients will know that even specialized information that's coming from you is from a source that they know and trust. Making sure that your logo leads will help to make sure that people will open your message because they're previewing it in their email and in their web browser on their phone or on their email browser on their phone. And so if you have that logo and if they're familiar with your logo, that's going to help your open rates. You need to think about how you're going to be most recognizable. Some folks are very big on Facebook or other social media networks. Some are big on email. Make sure that you pay attention to how your brand is presented across all of those networks. And if your brand kind of gets crazy or different, on each of those different locations, then you're gonna to wanna to take some time to standardize your brand so that everything looks good. Who an email or social media post came from turns out to be the most important part of winning the battle of priorities. So you need to think about who is sending that. If it's from sales at your organization, that might be worse for opens and click-through rates than simply having it come from David BusyWeb or coming from your connection or coming from the news from the local newsletter. So make sure that you're thinking about what people are going to identify most with, especially if you're a solopreneur, you're probably going to want to have the message come from you versus your business. The more you can connect up and the more you can drive people people via recognition, 
the better off you're going to be. As we look at this, you know, being consistent with logo and with branding colors, using images of your business, products and people, and consistent language across everything that you do. And in this case, the, this company is very consistent in the coloring, in the font, in the logos, <coughs> and in the text. You can see that all of these things relate to each other. The email looks like the website, looks like their Facebook page. And note that although their email and their website logos are horizontal, are a little bit wider, on Facebook, they've taken the time to create a square logo that's easily recognizable at a thumbnail. So you want to have that shrunk down and connected. So Baked by Melissa uses this pretty darn decently, and she makes sure that her email, website, and Facebook page all look similar. The goal is people want to be able to recognize and respond to the company that they're most engaged with. If they happen to see th something from you on Facebook and they remember an email that they saw you from before, if they take the time to click on anything from your email and it goes into your website, you don't want them to be lost when they get there. So make sure that everything looks good, looks consistent, and looks like it all comes from the same company. Next up, don't use hard to read fonts. We're going to talk a little bit about fonts here and that's a little bit more detailed and connected. So really, as we look at this, you can see from, from the left to the right in the not to do versus that's better. You know, there's a lot of fancy fonts and a lot of crazy stuff that goes in here. There's on the left, there's links that are blue and coupons and all, there's four different font colors and, and things that I can see on here. If you use too many fonts or combine too many different fonts, it really makes your emails look messy. Pare it down to no more than two fonts and only use italic and bold styles to add variety. If you have content or text that's too small, it's not going to give enough contrast and it's not going to be readable of enough for people to take the next step. If you have an email that's hard to read or that looks very blockish or looks like it's going to be a lot to read, people are more likely to just swipe and delete than they are to actually look at this. We recommend at least an 11 point font for body text and at least 22 points for headlines. That might seem large, but Think about the way it displays on a phone screen that's four inches in diameter, and that'll help you to think about and broaden your horizons as far as it needs to be scannable and legible. Even on this little screen, even on this video on YouTube, if you're watching this as a replay, it's easy to read the right-hand side, and all of the text and content is the same. So. Let's talk a little bit about serif fonts and sans serif fonts. On the left and right are a few options. The serif fonts have something called serifs on them, and those are the little tweaks and deals on the bottom. They're really great for printed material, but they tend to be harder to read online. Popular serif fonts are Baskerville, Georgia, Times New Roman. If you have a business that has a literary bent, you may want to bend the rules a little bit and look at serif fonts inside of your emails if it matches your brand. But in general, sans serif fonts, those that don't have little dinguses on the ends of them, <clears throat> tend to be easier to read on the web. They're used often for websites and small text. And popular, popular sans serif fonts are Arial, Helvetica, Verdana, and others. So the key thing is that you need to make sure that you're using serif fonts or sans serif fonts that are large that are likely to be included in your readers system menus so if it's not on a PC normally you can grab and select all kinds of different fonts and and connections but if the font that you're selecting in your HTML email isn't specifically called for or isn't included in a computer that it's being read on it's going to look like whatever the default font for either serif or sans serif is going to be. So that takes a little bit more of that control away from you. And taking it one step further, you know, you want to make sure that you're very careful. On the left, we see a newsletter that has inconsistent fonts. It's hard to read with color combinations. It has poor contrast between fonts and their background colors. There's text over images rendering it illegible. There's a lot of body copy. It's poorly sized and the positioned images are just bad. On the right, 
it's much more clear. It gets right to the point, and all of the fonts look good among each, among each other. Specifically on color, which is what I want to talk about next. You know, if you make sure that you're using the right colors, it can go a long ways. Number three is don't use the wrong colors. So what not to do? Of course, having tone over tone font colors is going to be harder to read. And so let's look at the next few slides and make sure that you can see or get some more detail on what your palettes for colors should be. The key thing to remember is that your brand needs to be represented across every email that you send. So on your website, on your emails, in your social media, you probably have a few key colors. Those are probably in your logo. And depending on what you're trying to relate, we're going to give you some tips on how to do that. So first, 85% of shoppers buy a product because of the color and that they like it. And 80% of color increases brand recognition. So you know, when you think yellow, you're thinking Cheerios. When you think red, you think Target. When you think blue, you think IBM. So what do you think? 40% in fact of people say that blue is their favorite color. So that's usually a good idea if you wanna go for corporate or calming and connected. You'll notice that BusyWeb's colors are yellow and blue. Let's get into a little overview on what some of the common colors can relate. Yellow tends to be optimistic and youthful. If you have a youthful kind of brand, an optimistic and easy to approach brand, um, yellow is very helpful. Um, that's one of the reasons that BusyWeb's main colors are yellow. And by op opposition, blue. And so we'll talk about blue in a second, but red conveys energy. It increases the heart rate, it conveys urgency, and well done red can really help drive excitement behind a brand. Um, there's a reason red sports cars are the primary color for sports cars. It's just exciting and interesting. Blue conveys trust and security. Banks and businesses tend to use blue quite a bit. And again, we said 40% of people report that blue is their favorite color. So it's just a good E is for everybody color. Green relates wealth and relaxation. Green is money. Green is easy for the eyes to process. Orange tends to be aggressive. Also offsets very well with blue. And a call to action, subscribes and buy or sell is great under orange. Black tends to be powerful and sleek. Luxury product marketing tends to benefit from black. The little black dress is one thing that's very common and popular. Pink is romantic and feminine. Product marketing to women and girls is very popular under the pink kind of color palette. And then purple is soothing and calming. Beauty products, marketing, or if you're a sports fan in Minnesota, um, can be pretty helpful as well. So that's general. If you want to take a screenshot of this as you're thinking about colors for your emails and for your brand, this is an easy one to use. Um, you can also use um, the following address at, at the bottom of the page, blog.kissmetrics.com slash color dash psychology. If you wanted to check out more information on color psychology, that's what you can refer to. Key thing, if you can't read it, neither will your customers. Here's some bad examples of hard to read text. You know, if you have extremely bright color combinations, it doesn't really matter how many and it doesn't matter which ones, using combinations or large areas of intense pure color is never a good idea. While you might think it'll catch attention, bright colors are hard to look at, your message won't be read, and your email will have inevitably end up in the trash. Save the bright colors for small areas such as buttons or call to action areas. Bright textured backgrounds are also a big no-no. This is just distracting for readers from your content. They're going to compete with other far more important aspects of your email, and your message is going to be lost. If you use background textures, they should be subtle, set back, and second place to any of your other content. A lot of our clients mess this up when they try to put text on top of dynamic imagery, perhaps in a call to action image on top of their photos. But you can see, especially on our little gingerbread man here, the R and the D are very hard to read inside of that image. So make sure that you're thinking about that and looking at it. Too much of anything isn't good either, including colors. Too many colors makes your design busy and hard to look at, and try to keep your main color palette to no more than three colors. And contrast, especially between your text and your background, 
is important. Light text or objects on a light background will be lost, as will dark text on a dark background. Make sure that you keep your message clear and defined by making sure that it shows up. All of these are relatively hard because there's just not enough contrast. And finally, avoid using color combinations such as red and blue, red and gray, green and red, and any other com combinations that are hard to read. Focusing on such combos is difficult for the human eye, and the content will really appear to wiggle, causing eye strain. If you look at this, especially for me, number two, the red on gray, it's, it's just hard to read. And so black, blue, red, any neon colors for background color choices make it tough to read because there's too much contrast. White space is white space because it's really simple and really easy to look at. So let's look at some good color choices. You know, as we look at this, good choice colors have good contrast. Black on white, gray, blue, um, darker blue on lighter blue. All of these are relatively easy to read. And choose things that have really good contrast. So if you look at this, that's going to be the easier way. And if you want to have actually take a screenshot of this page, these are some great color combinations if you want to have your content look great. Here's some quick tools that you can use if you want to use color choosers to help you figure this out. So there's a handful of free ones. First, you know, if you're on a Mac, the digital color meter is just available. You can get it from the help menu. Color Cop for PC users. They both have a color identifier tool that will allow you to pull an exact color from your website to use in your marketing material. So it just gives you a little eyedropper. You hover over it, and it gives you an exact hex value. So this is 28DFF, and those are all together inside of the... Um, in, inside of your text code, your HTML code. And on the color cop, you can see that it actually uses the correct hex code with the pound sign in front of it. So this red is pound C90000. So easy way to grab those tools. It's built right in and, and or easy to download. Colorcop.net gives you a free download of that one for Windows. To pick great color schemes, I like colorschemer.com slash online.html. You know, it's easy and give you even further by creating, creating palettes of complementary colors around your primary color. So may, you might want to pick the primary color of your logo or what you prefer and then find complementary colors to these and you can see how they work together. My favorite is Adobe Color CC. It's just color.adobe.com. Super easy and it gives you opposite ends of the spectrum so that you can look at what works well together and see how the palettes work and then grab the hex codes for each of those palette colors. So a lot of psychology and detail in this. I'm going to quick over for a second, make sure that we don't have any questions. Um, we have even more folks watching right now, so thank you very much for joining us. If you do have questions, again, as a reminder, just go to the Google Plus link from this page and click on, click on it inside of here. If you click under number one on the page on the Busy Web event, then you can stream or look at the video and ask questions inside of this page by clicking on the big green button. If you do have specific questions about anything that we're covering today, that's the best way to do it. All right, let's get to our next don't. Four, don't be disorganized. So, easy. When a reader glances at your email, they should know right away which information is the most important what they should look at next, and what's the least important. Make this easy by, for your users by using large, bold headlines for newsletters' main topics, but also use the right template to organize your message. Be sure to pick a template that's mobile-friendly so smartphone readers can easily navigate through your info. This is already included in most Constant Contact accounts. If you look at your template, especially if you've used a template for a long time, more than a year, you're probably going to revisit want to revisit that template and update it to make sure that it's mobile responsive or mobile friendly. The email that you see on the left really isn't fit for the information in a monthly newsletter. It's not very mobile friendly because it has columns and a single column template works better for mobile users. And again, we remember that 51% of people that read email do it on a mobile device or 51% of all email is read on a mobile device. The email on the right as a well-organized template, you can get to the call to action, you can see what people are recommending, and that's how that works. It's just simpler, easier, and much better. 
There's all kinds of different campaigns. Here's the types of campaigns that you can send using your email service provider. Select a template that's appropriate for the message that you're sending. And after you've picked out that template, you can customize it with colors to match your brand and make sure that you confer back with the handy reference guide that I used before. Make sure that those colors are complementary and that they match your brand and you'll do well. Whether you have a newsletter, announcement, product promotion, fundraiser, sales event, seasonal messages, or just letters, have all that information ready and at, the, and at your beck and call by using a great tool like Constant Contact. So whether you have a bunch of information to share or a bunch of things that you need to connect with people on, here's a few notes before we look at some emails. So templates really make the process of sending emails much easier and still allow you to preserve the look and feel of your brand. And here's some examples. Before we take a look at the emails, you might want to notice that all of the examples that I'm going to show follow every best practice we're going to cover today, or not all of them cover all those. So what you want to focus on when you look at these emails is how they use templates that reflect the type of communication that they're sending to your audiences. First, split rotten or spoilt rotten beads. They're a bead and craft store that sells their product online. They use product promotion email templates that allow them to display different items for sale and images of each of these items are linked to their website. When you click on the products in the email, you go and purchase them right away. As a side benefit, you know which products are most popular from your emails because you can see which clicks are being used inside of your emails. The next email is from a nonprofit, Gorilla Doctors. They send regular emails that include news and information about the organization and fundraising efforts. They consistently use a newsletter template to organize the information they want to share with subscribers. And you can see that there's a lot of details right on here. And it kind of pushes toward nonprofit. One of the biggest things that they're looking for is donate. So that big orange button right there gets right to the point on what they want. Finally, the third email is from a business to business, fogged in bookkeeping. They use a business letter template when sending out information for tax deadlines. It's a lot of text on this email, but again, they're talking to their clients who are already engaged and who need this information. So it's okay to put busy messages out with a lot of text if the text directly relates to what your clients need. They say right in big bold letters, don't be left to scramble in 2015 and here's all of the details. They do have one big call to action, tax deadlines and reminders with a big clickable link. So it gets right to the business and you can browse all of those things if you need them or you can simply go to where you want, where they want you to go. As you're looking at this, especially as we looked at the fogged in bookkeeping, number five is don't forget images. There's a lot of stuff out on, that, on the images on this email on the left and of course the right one is much better. You want your images to reflect your brand and look professional. The good news is most smartphones and digital cameras now shoot incredibly high video quality and photo quality, so you don't need a ton, ton of technical know-how or extra money to create great images all by yourself. You're going to want to pay attention to lighting, and you're going to want to look at what directly applies to you and your business. Don't use low-quality images or stock photos that are overly staged. As a matter of fact, on the left one here, you can see that it says "I stock" right on that image. It has the, the, the watermark right on it. So that's an obvious clue that you haven't paid for that image, which is not a good thing to do. You need to look at your licensing for images, and if you're going to use stock photos, you need to pay for them. There's another option and, a, and another way to get your images quickly and easily, and that's through a tool called PhotoPin, P-H-O-T-O-P-I-N. That's where you can grab Creative Commons licensed photos. Those are photos that are licensed to be used anywhere for free as long as you give the proper attribution or follow the direct requests of the image publisher. Some of those Creative Commons licensed photos are only for nonprofit work. Some of them are for attribution only, and some of them are general use. Depending on what you need, make sure that you're respecting the image holder's rights and using the type of attribution that you're being instructed to do. PhotoPin's a great tool, but you can still run afoul of the law and run yourself into trouble if you don't use images correctly. Best option is to shoot professional videos yourself, upload them correctly, make sure that they don't overpower. So 
The email on the right has professional images. It's large enough. It does a great job of visualizing the email's message about yoga classes, and it's probably from Half Moon Yoga Studios' actual imagery. So, images receive a lot of engage engagement from your audience. 82% of people pay more attention to emails that have images. If you need people to do one thing, you should consider using a still photo rather than a video to keep people focused on the physical, measurable result you're trying to achieve. You also really shouldn't re over rely on images to get your messages across. Many email providers, as a default setting, don't automatically show images, especially if you happen to be trying to connect with someone that's in a rural environment or may have slower internet or dial-up speeds. They're going to have their images turned off, and if you rely on images, they're just not going to see your content. Make sure also that you take advantage of pre-header text, the first few lines of an email, at the text description at the first image at the top. That's going to appear if images aren't, or aren't set up to display on desktop. And that also helps for folks that don't have great eyesight or that are using their phone's reading capabilities to show off content. It's still important to relay the type of content that's in your images, even if people can't physically see them. Few few words of caution. I mentioned earlier that you should limit your images. Emails with three or fewer images get the best click through. So make sure that you're not over inundating folks with imagery. What kind of images should you use? Think about what you're trying to communicate. If you sell products, show people what you want them to purchase by using great photos of those products. If you're a nonprofit, share photos of your last event or fundraiser or beneficiaries of what you do. And if you're a B2B, you might want to highlight your employees in action with good candid photos from your business. Don't use the stock photos of the attractive person with the headset on unless that's actually someone from your team. And ideally try and brand this so that it's absolutely relating to you and your company. Next. When using video, make sure that you mention in your subject line that your email includes a video so the readers know about it right away. If they're interested in the video, you know, just put it right in the subject line, video, join the movement, so that they know it. Consumers prefer watching video to reading long text articles, so if you have something that's complicated to share, 50% of people are more likely to read emails that include a video. Make sure that your length of your video is short. I say keep it around 30 seconds or more, but Constant Contact says you know 90 seconds or less. As long as it's in there, people can see how long this message is going to take or how long this email is going to take. Another pro tip, don't send them to a YouTube video that requires them to watch an ad if you're trying to get them to do something, unless you're trying to get ad revenue, and I don't know why you would via an email campaign. You can make video work for your business. You can use it to show product demos, customer te testimonials, promotional materials, or just to share user-generated content. The key thing is to make sure that it's relevant to your audience, that you don't waste their time, and especially with video, you want to pay attention to audio on that video and, that make, and make sure that the audio is nice and clear. You want to keep your microphone close to your subject, so using a lavalier mic if you're, if you're doing some recording. Um, you'll probably notice that the audio is pretty decent on this webinar and because during video or during this video shoot, I have a boom mic that keeps my microphone like two inches in front of my face. So if you have it far back, you'll probably notice as I back away from my microphone that it's getting more and more echoey. That's because the microphone picks up more the further it or the harder it needs to work. So if you keep your face and your, and your subject close on your video, the audio is going to sound much better. And we actually have a busy webinar that covers video and details in a much better fashion and a much more depth. So if you're interested in that, go to busyweb.com slash events and then search for that video. Um, when you're working with photos, here's, here's a couple of basics for emails in particular. 600 by 200 pixels is great for header images. 600 pixels wide, height scales for others. And then really avoid copyright issues, as I mentioned. Either purchase your images, take your own, use your own photos, or when you do stock images or photo pin images, you can grab those. Here's a couple of other spots that you can grab. Freedigitalphotos.net works pretty well. Stockvault.net or freeimages.com. Again, my favorite personally is photo pin. 
So if you're a Constant Contact customer, which many of you probably are, one more tool to find stock photos is available in your account. You have access to free and paid images in your account's image library through Big Stock. So purchasing images or, select, or selecting free images and adding them directly to your library is easy to do once you're inside of Constant Contact's tools. You can upload those photos, or of course you can use your Facebook and Instagram photos. <coughs> so if you're sharing images on your business's page or Instagram account, go ahead and add them to your emails. Use them in your photos from Facebook and Instagram. Just connect your account to Facebook or Instagram page, and then add photos to those image libraries inside of your emails. Very simple, very fun, and it works really well. Next, don't forget to make it shareable. We're going to talk about how to make your emails shareable across social media platforms. You've probably received an email that includes buttons with logos for one or more social media platforms on the top or bottom. It's really an effective way to grow your reach. Emails that include those social buttons increase click-through rates by more than 150%. They also make it easy for your readers to follow you on the various social networks with a single click. So the email on the left isn't shareable. There aren't any buttons that allow readers to share the email on social media, and although they did try with a text link on top for their Facebook page, there's no buttons for readers to click on to follow the Yoga Studio. The other email is absolutely shareable. It has the stuff on the top and the bottom in the little orange boxes, and you can see your LinkedIn profile, share on Facebook or Twitter, and the bottom buttons actually let you go to those social networks. Here's the kick. Emails with social sharing buttons and click, increase click-through rates by 158%. If you're using Constant Contact, add that share button to the top of your emails. It allows your readers to post a link to your email on their social profiles. That's highlighted in this box right here. Also remind P your audience to share your promotions. Ask them to like it on Facebook, retweet on Twitter, or pin on Pinterest. What you don't ask for, you ain't gonna get, so make sure that you're taking that extra time. And then also add social media buttons that link to your business's social media profiles. If you're spending time and if you're doing a great job in social media, having those links will help people to connect with you where they prefer to spend their time. They've received an email from you, that's wonderful, but they're probably on Facebook a lot more than they're checking your emails or checking your website. So make sure that you connect up and use that. You can also expand your reach with the social share tool. And this is what that social share tool looks like in Constant Contact. When you publish this out, you fill in your details, and then Social Share will post to Facebook for you. Here's an example, and here's what it does. Super simple, super easy, and again, fully integrated into Constant Contact, and then helps you work smarter and not harder. Finally, in the big seven of don'ts, don't ignore mobile. We've already covered this a little bit, but let's look at what this looks like on a mobile device. 80% of users will delete a you, an email that doesn't look good on mobile. We've already covered that. Think about it. Do you want to read long and complex messages on your phone when you're on the go, when you're in line at the supermarket? Probably not, and neither do your customers or supporters. You're not going to read something that's on the left. You're going to have to pinch, zoom, scroll, and look. So what you want is something on the right, like on the right. Basic considerations. Rethink your content. Long-form content Newsletters that have more than a couple of short or to-the-point paragraphs doesn't really work for mobile readers. People aren't looking for a book when they pick up their email on their mobile device. So look at the content you're building. Can you condense it? Can a picture tell that story better? And you can, turn, can you turn one newsletter into a series by cutting it into pieces? If you have longer and more complex content or things that you'd want to share, the good news is you can send an email with a clear call to action with a link that directs people to where that asset lives on your website, blog, or other resources. And as a super extra bonus, when you click or when people click on that, you know what most resonates with the audience of that email. If everyone clicks on the second article in that article or in your email, you know that that was a home run. If your first article, however, receives zero clicks, then you know that it probably doesn't resonate with the intended audience. And so you're going to want to rethink the tone the text, or the call to action inside of that email. Some common mistakes, lengthy text, tiny fonts, multiple columns. You know, this is a bummer of an email over on for, for Half Moon Studio. You know, the bottom of this email is cut off. 
people don't take time to scroll through long emails. Also avoid tiny fonts. They're hard to read and avoid multiple columns because they can get cut off or might shrink to fit. Look at the following version. Keep it simple. Less is more. Large fonts are legible in one column only. Headstand workshop. Turn your world upside down safely and easily. Ease anxiety and fo focus on the present moment. Sunday, June 15th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Simple, easy, gets right to the point and gets right to the call to action. Some other common mistakes, large off-screen images. So when you look at this, you know, this, this, poor, this poor image here is all the way cut off because it's so huge. It didn't resize because it's not in a mobile, mobile responsive format. Make it easy to scroll. And then make sure that you have your call to action front and center. Keeping it easy includes sizing your images to fit and using clearing obvious calls to action. There's a link here. It's 35 bucks. Register, Half Moon Yoga Studio. Here's the address. Gets right to the point. So that's key. And another thing that's awesome, try building this for your phone. If it works for your phone, it'll work on great, great on your customers' phones. There's a lot of apps that'll make this easy to build. Constant Contact does have an email creation app for your iPhone or Android. You can find it by going to the App Store on those respective tools and searching for Constant Contact. Apps are more convenient and faster than creating campaigns from your desktop. You can create your email through touch-based editing on your device and then preview your email, send texts, and schedule messages for delivery to your list. The big benefit of this is that it's pre-built to be awesome on mobile devices, so you don't have to guess if your tool is going to, or if your email is going to work on mobile because it's built from the start to look great on mobile. So let's put it all together and give you an overview. We're going to go into questions and answers right after this, so grab your questions and pop them in if you're thinking about those. Here's the deal. For your anatomy of your email and your email checklist, first, think about the preview pane. It's common for email recipients to use the preview pane in their inbox on a desktop, and they're getting a first look at your email there. If they're opening your email on mobile, the top section is the very first thing they see, and that's where they're going to make their decision. We've talked about this in other busy webinars, but really there's a rule of 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Inside of the first two words, people need to understand what you want from them, and they need to be captured. Then you need to grab them and pull them in. Inside of two seconds, they need to understand what the email is about, and you need to tell them what they can expect or what they need to do today. You need immediacy. You need to get right to the point. It's the difference between November newsletter and the three things that you need to know to make your business successful today. So maximize the top to two to four inches, keeping all the best practices in mind that we covered. The email template that you use must be a good fit for the information that you're sharing in your message. What you're trying to communicate, what the information is, is it a newsletter, a promo, a business letter? The right template's going to organize what you're trying to convey and make you look professional. The good news is that Constant Contact in particular has some really great templates. Browse through those, or if you work with BusyWeb as a client, we can actually create a custom template for you on behalf of, on behalf of BusyWeb via Constant Contact when you have a paid account. So talk to us if you need that, and we'd love to help. Make sure that your branding is visible right away. Use your brand colors. Your logo should be visible at the top of the email, either on the left or in the center. Don't ever put it on the right because it gets cut off on a smartphone screen. And when you insert your logo, make sure that you include your business name in the text description. Sometimes images aren't visible by default based on the recipient's email service. If that happens, the text is going to appear instead, and you at least want your business name to be shown if the logo isn't shown. Speaking of logos and images, make them clickable. Put that content out there. Make sure that people can see it and read what's going on. Make it as easy as humanly possible so that people understand what you're asking them for and what you're trying to do. And then, of course, be selective with the content that you include in your email. If one paragraph can get away with what three paragraphs could convey, use the one. Don't include any content that's not relevant to the message or if you're trying to send an individual email. Most people don't have the time to read through a ton of information. And in fact, a recent study by Constant Contact showed that customers that showed emails with 20 lines of text received, or 20 lines of text or less, received higher click-through rates. If you have calls to action, 
like asking people to purchase something, register for an event, take advantage of a sale, or read an article on your blog, make sure that the call to action is above the scroll line on both your desktop version and your mobile version. Keep it above front and center because people are busy. We won't look at more content than we need to and don't make people work for the content that you're trying to get them to do. This is where calls to action really shine because if you're not thinking about being clear on what people need to do, people aren't going to be able to figure it out for themselves. And if they're in the supermarket line swiping around with their thumb, there's no way that they're possibly going to find and take the action that you're looking for. And then finally, use social media icons. Have those buttons at the top and at the bottom. Allow people to share and connect with content. You know, if social media has really changed the way business works and you want to connect with people where they prefer to spend their time, they found you in this email because they subscribed to your newsletter or they became a new client, they might be very into Facebook or big LinkedIn users or big Twitter users or hopping for Instagram. Having that content available and ready and giving them something to support you and your business is going to do a lot more than continuing to hit them with email that they might check once in a while. Email is the one grand unifier of online marketing. Your website is the foundation, and that's where everything needs to originate from and drive back to. But social media is where people connect and where they're most often likely to share. So make sure that you're using all of these things, giving you the right kind of content. Here's some resources for how to learn more on this, and then we're going to get more into a couple of Q&As. So if you do have questions, again, last chance to get in those questions, or simply send a note, and I'll give you my contact info again in a moment. If you want more information, BusyWeb's trainings are available via our Busy Webinars at busyweb.com slash events. If you go to busyweb.com slash events, you can go back in time through our existing content and check out what we've been up to. You can see more detail on video, on how to use images, on how to write a great subject line. All of that is available. And actually, at BusyWeb, we also have some overviews and some roundup articles that give you a little bit of everything. So whether you want to know what you need to do inside of your website, the basics of having a great email campaign, we've got a suite of videos called from our more than 180 busy webinars that will give you the details that you need in a fair and sweet, easy way to grab a hold of them. We've got a great library now. Constant Contact also has a great library. So if you go to blogs.constantcontact.com slash library, there's all kinds of guides, infographics, recorded webinars, and more on there. And if you aren't already in with Constant Contact, go ahead and start up with us today for a 60-day free trial at busyweb.com slash cc. Two things that you'll get there. If you subscribe with us, as soon as you pay, pay for your account, we'll get you a custom mobile responsive template on behalf of Constant Contact because we are authorized local experts who also happen to be master certified in Constant Contact. We have a little bit more pull, and so we can have Constant Contact go to work for you even more. And the templates that our clients have used are truly amazing, so you'll love them if you can get access to them. And uh, make sure that you connect up with us. Finally, if you want to get access to this presentation deck to get those tips and tricks, just send an email to me at davidbusyweb.com or give me a call at 612-293-9323 and either grab a free trial at busyweb.com slash cc or if you would like a report on your search engine optimization results and what you're doing in your marketing, including a two-page checklist of what you could do better inside of a 10-page buzz report, Go to busyweb.com slash buzz for more information. I'm going to step aside for just one second and add one final thing. Today, BusyWeb announced a fantastic new opportunity for folks that are interested in getting serious about their online marketing. We are giving away $1,000 in value for our Buzz Builders clients. If you sign up for a 13-month um, arrangement with us in our Buzz Builders program, and Buzz Builders programs do search engine optimization, email marketing, social media marketing, content writing, text and special updates for search engine optimization, and all around general help. If you select a 
one-year program with us, you're going to get a month for free at a $1,000 discount level. So if you could use an extra grand to help grow your business, connect with us, again, at busyweb.com slash cc or busyweb.com slash buzz because both of those will connect with us or send me a simple note saying that, saying that you're interested in talking about the Buzz Builder program for the $1,000 discount. Send that to david busyweb.com and we'd love to help you today. All right, that's all I have for right now. So I'm going to switch over, make sure that we don't have any questions. I see that we do not. So if you do have any additional questions, please do send those our way. Again, if you're too shy to send in questions and you'd like to get a hold of us, just send a note to davidbusyweb.com or stay tuned for our next webinars. We're going to talk about offers and promotions and how to kick butt in the upcoming holiday, holiday session by um, connecting out using offers and promotions inside of email marketing. So if you want to learn how to rock your holidays, check in and Trigvi and Jenna on our team will be con conveying that on our next busy webinar next Wednesday at noon central. Again, I am Dave Meyer with BusyWeb. Thank you very much for joining us today. And remember, at BusyWeb, we help you generate buzz without getting stung. Have a great week.